In today's plan with me, I'll be creating this month's spreads in an April showers theme. Hello all you lovely and wonderful people, I am Lynette, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This month's theme is inspired by the English proverb of April showers bring May flowers and probably a little bit to do with the fact that this last month has done nothing but rain. So for the cover page I have done um, some little rough sketches of some umbrellas around the title of April. I used a 3H pencil to sketch out my umbrellas first just so I can work out where everything goes and make sure that the placement of everything looks okay. So starting off with the title of April that I've done in my own handwritten font, I am um, using a dark grey 05 fine liner from Unipin. These are new pens that I purchased last month and I've been looking for an excuse to use these and I thought the grey would go really well with this theme instead of doing my text in black like I usually do. Now I've said this quite a few times in my videos before, um, my typography skills aren't the best. In an attempt to create an aesthetically pleasing handwritten font style, I just wrote it in my neatest version of my own handwriting and then I'm thickening up each downstroke of each of the letters to make it look a bit like calligraphy, hopefully. And now with the same dark grey pen, I'm going over the outlines of my umbrellas. At this stage, I'm not going to worry about adding much detail, just sort of like the outlines of the shapes of the umbrellas. Once I go over all the outlines with my pen, I'm then going to go in with some watercolour to add some washes of colour and detail. Usually I tend to lean to more sort of over elaborate spreads for my monthly setup, but here at the Clark House we're still very much in limbo with regards to moving and stuff, so um, I wanted to do something that was simple and effective and wouldn't take me forever and a day to create. And sometimes it's just nice to do something completely different from what you usually do. So we decided to create many different styles of umbrellas surrounding the title of April. Some open and some closed. And I wanted to mix up the direction and angles of the umbrellas and which way the handles were facing to make it a little bit more interesting. I have no real clear idea how I'm going to decorate each umbrella. I'm just going to go with the flow and see what happens. Now for the closed umbrellas, I did use a 01 fine liner that's still in the same shade of the dark grey as the thicker pen. More to sort of test out the pens themselves because I haven't actually used them yet until today. And also thought it would be good to have the umbrellas that are open sort of appear to be more at the forefront because they're in the thicker pen. The difference is incredibly subtle, I think. Armed with some clean kitchen towel, some clean water and a watercolour pan set from Sergeant Art, I begin to add some colour to the umbrellas and I also use some paint grey from Daniel Smith. I will link all the materials that I use in today's video in the description below. Now I'll start off with my first umbrella with some indigo blue and I'm intending to sort of stick with blue and grey tones throughout the whole of this theme and this is to tie in with the colours that you sort of associate with a rainy day. When it comes to the painting, I am going to be using a wet on dry technique. Um, I'm always a little bit worried, even though these notebooks are fantastic with watercolour, if you overload it too much, it can cause the page to buckle if you go too heavy handed with water. So I'm going to practice on the air of caution and try and eliminate that problem from happening. Now, like I said before, I have no idea how I'm actually going to decorate these umbrellas, but I am intending to make each one different. Stepping away from the indigo blue for a bit, I start to use some purple and a little bit of permanent violet. Now I know I said that I was going to just use blue and grey tones, but I thought purple would go really nice along with that too. And help to brighten everything up a little bit and also add an extra bit of colour. Plus purple's my favourite colour. With the initial wash dry on the first umbre umbrella, <laughs> umbrella, I'm then going in with a bit more indigo blue to add a bit of shading to the umbrella so it doesn't look so flat. And I'm trying to make it darker along the spines of the umbrella to try and make them stand out. With this next umbrella, I'm using a mix of the indigo blue and the purple. And I've sort of darkened the underneath of the umbrella and add wavy lines above. 
And then with this next one, I'm gonna do like a watercolor blend of the two colors together and see what happens as they mix into each other. The next one, I'm gonna just do a really deep purple, which once dry, I'm then gonna add some details either with a white gel pen or maybe a black fine liner, I'm not sure yet. And then for the last two umbrellas, I add a light wash of Payne's Gray. I then decided to color in the thicker parts of the lettering that I've done. I thought that it would make the text stand out a little bit more and hopefully make the lettering look a bit neater. Now, I thought the page needed some paint splatters to replicate falling rain, but also it was looking a bit bland, even though I haven't finished decorating all of these umbrellas. I just think it needed something to the backdrop that complements the image as a whole but that isn't too overpowering, and I love paint splatters. I do tend to add a lot of paint splatters to a lot of my work. For the umbrella I'm currently working on, I'm using a 01 black fine liner and adding some ditzy daisies. I wanted to try and incorporate daisies somewhere in this monthly theme, seeing as they are the flower of April. I've just added some sketchy dots to the gray umbrella, and then I decided to go over the umbrella handles with the same black pen. And then for this umbrella, I wanted to add some black horizontal lines that do turn out to be a little bit wonky. And then with a Signo white gel pen, I add some swirls to this umbrella and then some simple white dots to the central umbrella. For this indigo-y purpley blue umbrella, I wanted to add some sort of floral designs along the bottom and then I decided to add a few extra along the top and the middle of the umbrella too. I'm not worried about going into too much detail because I wanted to go for sort of a doodly look, which I think I've achieved. Next up is the calendar page. Working from the center of the page, I then drew out my squares for each day of the month. Each box for each day is three by three with a space of one box in between each one. And then I added some indigo blue of various diluted mixes. I didn't worry too much about sticking to the lines of each box because I wanted to go for that kind of loose feel. And I then outline each box with a 01 gray fine liner, again, very loosely, and I outline each box a couple of times. With the same pen, I also add the days of the week. And also with the same pen, I add the dates to each box. To title my calendar page, I use exactly the same font that I used on my cover page. And to decorate the title, I decided to add some thick, heavy rain clouds using some Payne's Grey. which once I've finished, I am gonna leave to dry and then I will work on further. But in the meantime, it's time for some more rain splatters. At the bottom of the page, I decided to add some Wellington boots with flowers growing out of them, just as a little reference to the whole April showers and May flowers thing. So again, I used Payne's Grey for the wellies and for the flowers and leaves growing out of the Wellingtons, I used a warm grey koi brush pen to create some thicker leaves, a 01 black fine liner for the daisies. I thought the wellies were looking a little bit pale, so I went over with another wash of Payne's Grey to add some shadows. And because the clouds are now dry, I did the same for them too. Focusing most of the second wash to the bottom of the cloud. To finish off the wellies, I add a thick mix of indigo blue and add some extra leaves. On the opposite page to my calendar page, I want to add a list of important dates. Now I bought this pack of papers and things from a shop called The Works here in the UK. It was like a book that came with various different papers and stickers and things, most of which are of a celestial nature, but then there was a couple of pages that had these beautiful clouds. And I thought it's about time that I use some of these stationery supplies that I keep accumulating. And not only will it look beautiful, but it will also save me a lot of time. The sheets of printed paper that I'm using is quite big, so I had to cut it to size. Each sheet of paper has a pattern printed on the reverse too. And on the back of this clouded one, there was this plain blue with a very faint squared pattern on the back, which would be really helpful for actually adding the list of important dates. So using a print stick, I stick in the clouds and then I cut out a smaller strip of the important dates, making sure I cut out 32 squares from top to bottom. So that I have 30 squares for each day of the month and then a square space at the top and the bottom. I made sure the back of the paper had a very even coverage of glue and then stuck it down very tentatively, almost like it was wallpaper, and I kept smoothing it over to make sure that there was no air bubbles. And then once I was happy that that was all flat to the page, I added the strip of blue squared paper for my important dates. Once 
once I thought I got that pretty much smoothed down, I let it dry and went and had a cup of tea and then came back to it. And then with the dark grey fine liner, I added the numbers for each of the dates. I used the 05 and not the 01 for this because I wanted to make sure that the date standard stood, standard? That's not good English. Sorry, stood out against the blue paper. I had some light grey washi tape that I added to the top and bottom of the checkered blue paper. I can't remember where I got it from now, as I've had it for quite some time. I thought it'd work nicely with this theme. It is ever so slightly striped, but I thought it's about time that I start using some of these washi tapes that I keep accumulating. So this is that paper collection that I mentioned earlier on in the video. As I think I previously mentioned, it has stickers and other things in it too, and I found this April sticker, so I added that to the top left of the important dates. Next up is my gratitude page, which I haven't had in my bullet journal for a little while, but I'm bringing it back this month. For this, I'm gonna do a really simple spread. So for this, I'm going to use a mixture of the fine liners that I've already used throughout these spreads so far. And also a light blue gel pen, which has a bit of a cringy name. I think it's called Scribblicious or something. I could be wrong. I think it might be a brand associated with the works or even their own brand. And that's the light blue gel pen that I'm currently using right now. And then I thought it'd look really nice if I painted some of the numbers too. So I'm using Payne's Grey and Indigo Blue again. And I'm dotting the numbers over the page in a kind of methodical but random fashion and varying the sizes of the numbers too. And with each number, I intend to add something I was grateful for each day as I go through the month. Once again, I'm adding more splodges of paint all over the page and then I'm gonna add an umbrella to the bottom right hand of the page. I left that space purposely because I thought it would be a bit boring if there wasn't some kind of decoration added to this page. After painting and adding all the line work to my little doodle, I add some simple spots using a white Posca paint pen. For my mood trackers this month, I wanted to bring back the fun trackers instead of just a graph. I've kind of missed tracking my moods this way in March. Still keeping things nice and simple though, and within the monthly theme, I'm going to track how I'm feeling with lots of these simple clouds that I can paint each day with the colour or even colours of the mood that I feel that day. I drew a large cloud at the top of the page for the title, 30 more for each of the days of the month, and then an additional five smaller ones at the bottom to use as a key. I also added a doodle rainbow in the centre of the page, which whilst doing so, I forgot to press record. I also added some raindrops in between the clouds too, and with the smaller dark grey fine liner pen, I added the dates to the clouds as well. As a little extra, I thought it'd be quite cool to add different patterns to each of the clouds. Next up, I'm going to have a page dedicated to the rest of the trackers that I want to add into my spreads this month. First of which is my social media tracker, where I'll be tracking my YouTube, my Instagram, and really frustratingly, a new Facebook page. Unfortunately, my Facebook account got hacked recently and in the end got deactivated. My old Facebook art page is still up, but I can't access it at all, which is incredibly frustrating. I have set up a new page, but um, there's absolutely nothing on it at the moment. When I've got a few minutes spare, I will hopefully update that and get that all up and running again. Once I've got that all sorted and done and dusted, I will let you guys know. So next to the social media box, I'm going to be doing my habit trackers. This month, I'm tracking six habits, which are reading, um, watering my plants, sketching, practicing affirmations, getting off my bottom and doing some exercise, and then hopefully getting to bed before midnight because I'm terrible at going to bed at a decent time. And then wondering why I feel so tired in the morning when I still have a two and a half year old for some reason that I do not understand, <laughs> does not want to sleep consistently throughout the night yet. For the moment, I'm keeping everything really simple. I've numbered each of the days for the tracker calendars and then given it a title using the gray brush pen in a handwritten font. I kind of just want to fit all the trackers that I'm going to use into my page before I add any detail really, because once I get them all down, I can see what space I have left to play with. At the bottom of my page, I wanted to add a sleep tracker, which is a basic graph. It's a bit boring, but it's functional. <laughs> so it's 30 squares from the left to the right for the dates. And then I'm tracking how many hours sleep that I get 
Um, rather unrealistically, I'm going from zero to 12. I don't remember the last time I ever had slept 12 hours straight, but there you go. Maybe I should have only done it up to 10 hours, but I've already done it now. So in the space that's left between all the trackers, I'm going to do a little quote. This in keeping with the sleep tracker itself, um, which is there's nothing better than the sound of rain whilst you're falling asleep. Which personally, I definitely agree with. I do tend to go to sleep a lot with the YouTube video playing sort of rain and thunder sounds in the background. It's weird, I find storms kind of exhilarating, but at the same time, really relaxing. And once again, I'm gonna use umbrellas to decorate the page and finish off the quotes. I've done one open umbrella and one closed. I don't worry about painting them this time. I'm just using the pens that I've already used for this page. With the blue gel pen, I try and tie everything in with some raindrops dotted all over the page. And then add a few leafy designs around the title of the habit trackers. I just felt like this page needed a little bit more color. It was looking all a bit too bland and gray. So I also use some indigo blue to highlight the titles of the social media and the titles of the habits that I want to track. Right, for this next page, I was kind of in a bit of a quandary because obviously April starts with a two day week. Like I really didn't want to dedicate a whole page just to a weekend. So I decided to dedicate the bottom part of the page for the first two days of April. And kind of taking inspiration from my calendar page, I'm just painting in the days and then going over the boxes that I've created with paint with um, the gray fine liner, like I did with the calendar page. For the top of the page, I wanted to do a little rainy day painting. So I've masked off with some washi tape Tape that I really don't like. It came with a set and yeah I'm not a massive fan of geometric patterns. I added a wash of clean water and then basically using the same colours that I've used throughout this spread so far. So the indigo and Payne's grey and a little bit of purple. There was no plan as such. I'm just adding washes and dabs of paint here and there to create some clouds. I wanted my sky to be quite stormy looking and dramatic. So I'm just building up lots of Payne's grey and the indigo and the purple all together to create some dark stormy clouds. Underneath the clouds, I did think, oh, I'll just have like an ocean or like with a boat maybe on it. But then I decided to add the skyline of a town instead. I added a few light flicks of paint to create like the illusion of heavy rain. Now with my little mini painting complete, I thought the page on the other side looked a bit plain. So just to add a little bit of extra colour to the page, I added some Payne's Grey to my social media tracker. And then for the titles of the days, I still had some of the paper left over from the calendar page. So with that leftover paper, I cut out some cloud shapes and wrote in white gel pen, Saturday and Sunday. And then I add some outline to the daily boxes with the grey fine liner. With the same grey pen, I add the dates to the boxes and then stick down my clouds using Pritt Stick. And that's pretty much it for the first weekend, but then now on to my first full weekly. So for this, I'm doing a double page spread using, you've guessed it, umbrellas. Underneath those umbrellas, I add seven columns for the days of the week, measuring nine dots across. And again, I'm using the 05 grey fine liner. And then just like the page before, with the extra paper that I had left over, I draw and then cut out a few more cloud shapes to go at the top of the page. Once I've cut all the clouds out, I do set them aside for the time being. I want this time to keep the umbrellas quite monochrome and then just have the splash of colour with the paper clouds. So I add little designs to each umbrella, making each one different. This time using a black fine liner. And then a couple of the umbrellas, I do add some grey with the brush pen that I've been using before, which then I also use to add the days of the week at the bottom of the columns. And then with the light blue gel pen, I write the dates on top of the days which didn't end up looking quite as nice as I hope it would. And before sticking down all those paper clouds that I've cut out, I did paint some in some Payne's Grey first. Not many, only three. I just thought I needed some extra dark clouds for contrast. Once they were painted and then they dried, I could add some splashes for the rain and then stick the paper clouds down. Once all the clouds were stuck down, I thought it looked really cute. It was a really simple spread to create, but and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So let me know what you guys think. Did you enjoy this theme? 
let me know in the comments section below. I'd also be really interested to know if you guys have any suggestions with regards to what bullet journal themes you'd like me to do for the future. There's a few themes that I have to do this year that I've got earmarked for certain months, but yeah, I'm open to suggestions. And if you'd like to challenge me with a theme, then I would love that. So let me know in the comment section below. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I know you're probably fed up of hearing YouTubers ask for this, but yeah, likes and comments really do help the channel out with YouTube's baffling algorithms. Also, if you'd like to support the channel and my art, then please hit that subscribe button and notification bell so I can keep you updated with future content. Also, if you've been enjoying the sketching videos that I've been doing lately, I'm currently working on a brand new one and hopefully we'll be having that uploaded sometime this weekend, as well as a video announcing the 1000 sub giveaway. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Your support is greatly appreciated and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Bye for now and take care.